Much has been said tonight about uh, the purpose of the mission of these organizations, or particularly the Black Alliance for Educational Options, and where we were in the state. Uh, I, I didn't know where to start, and everybody was saying so much, and Pastor Dobines talked, and Pastor McGee, and uh, Sister Cherie, and so I recognize we have a speaker, and it's difficult uh, when called upon, uh, and, uh, and you at the microphone, it's, it's difficult to resist the temptation to say more than enough. So <laughs> let me just say uh, what I'll say tonight as we relate this to the state of education in Northwest Louisiana. Cattle Parish is the second worst state, I mean, excuse me, parish to be in in Louisiana if you live somewhere else. But it's the worst place to be if you live here. <laughs> because it doesn't matter about rank and Baton Rouge and New Orleans, the reality of it is because we embrace the system here on the front line, the worst place for our children to be is right here. Had a conversation with a, a gentleman today and we were talking and we were talking statistically and talking about numbers and I, and I use you all as an example. You can be a good model group, test group. How many of you all would go to a doctor if you were well aware that that doctor's record for being able to help patients was one out of three. If you knew for sure that, that in a life or death situation, one walks out, two never do. I would argue that most of you would, would, would scurry with haste to find another doctor. Because when it comes to a matter of life and death, 32% ain't a good number. And whenever you go to a brain surgeon, whenever you go to a cardiologist, you want somebody with a better record than one out of three. And I say that today because that is the reality that we are faced with. How we value our future is determined by how we value our children. And the reason I say that tonight is because 32%, that's the number that I hope you never forget. 32%. Now, you all have heard of President George Bush, and you remember his landmark education reform effort was called No Child Left Behind. We spent all night talking about the bad things about that, but there was one thing that I believe to be a great benefit, and that was a part of that law that required every district, every state and every school district to disaggregate data. In other words, it forced us to no longer say, yeah, we're doing pretty good, and we're okay, we are. No, we, you had to find out how white girls were doing, how black girls were doing, how white boys were doing, how African American boys were doing, how Latino girls and boys were doing, how every group demographically were doing. And that pulled the cover back on an age-old sin in America. Because every list that was good, African-American boys found their way to the bottom. Every list that was bad, they found their way to the top. It's suggested that the weak link in every, in nearly every district, bar none, was African-American males. And let me tell you, Shreveport, Cattle Parish, is absolutely no different. It may not make a difference to some of you, but I have a son who has gone from elementary through middle school and managed to make his way to the ninth grade, which means he has beat substantial <coughs> odds just getting to the ninth grade in Cattle Parish. And now the question becomes one of orchestrating an experience or navigating his personal circumstances in such a way that he finishes because the statistics suggest he may not. And I don't know about you, but 32% is not a good number for me. What 32% is, is the number of schools in Cattle Parish, the percentage of schools in Cattle Parish, which will give your child an average or better education. Maybe you didn't hear what I said, an average or better education. Not all of them better, some of them average. But if you want an average or better education, let me, let me move from the percentages. Out of 64 schools, there are 20 that you can choose from. Out of 64 schools, 20 of them are at a C, grade level or above. 
And if you are proud of, and those of you who know anything, I saw God back there, met him years ago as I worked at the Chamber of Commerce, so my uh, thing at the Chamber of Commerce has always been economic development. I want you to know that I don't care what Shreveport says and what the fathers of the city may say, but the best laid plans of economic development come unraveled by a poor education system. And one of the things we cannot go around the country and talk to new businesses to talk about relocating to Shreveport is how will it sound when we tell new businesses who are ready to relocate Try Shreveport, where your kids can come to a B system. And if you choose the right 20 schools, they can get a C education or better. Not a great sales pitch, but it's the reality. And so what ends up happening is we got the, those who are engaged in economic development and those who are trying to put a good face on our city are satisfied to, to deal with the sweet taste of some minor success, rather than stomaching the reality of the bitter taste of a dysfunctional system. And that's what we have in Cattle Parish. And it's one thing to have choices. And I'll tell you, when Buck was explaining, <coughs> Sister Cherie was talking, and she was saying, I can't say I, I came from, so everything she couldn't say, I was saying, but I can say that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and let me just suggest to you that my parents didn't have options. And those who gained an education also gained options. Because I was the beneficiary of an education, now guess what? I have options, but all parents do not. And I want to suggest to you that the, the children in our district deserve better than what we're giving them. I, I'm thankful for people like Patrick Williams, who was representing us in Baton Rouge. But I want to say this to Sheree, and maybe you can say this when you go somewhere else, that they, they people credit Hurricane Katrina in New Orleans. New Orleans was a poor and abysmal school system before the hurricane. And Hurricane Katrina gave them another opportunity. But I'm going to tell you, Louisiana, the worst thing that happened in Louisiana was not Hurricane Katrina. Because before Hurricane Katrina, and even now in other places outside of New Orleans, it appears to me that we are experiencing hurricane leadership. And that's what's wrecking our state, the lack of leadership. Not that we don't have people elected, but we don't have people who have the capacity to deliver to us what we need. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen? It's no longer a race issue only. Because we live in a district now that where we have six members of our school board who happen to be African American. We have a superintendent who happens to be African American. The panacea is not tone and pigmentation. Because the, the real deal is, unless you have a heart for what's right for our children, it doesn't matter what. Listen, I'd rather have 12 Chinese people doing what's best for black children than 12 black children messing up a school. <laughs> and, I, and I say this to you finally, that, that I was talking to Mr. Cooper, who's in the back. Uh, Mr. Eddie Cooper was a former principal in the city, and I asked him what perhaps to him was a dumb question. But I, I hadn't been in elementary and secondary education. I said, is it easier to fix a failing district or a failing school? He said, it's easy to fix a failing school. I said, maybe that's what we ought to do. One school at a time. Began to reconstitute these schools and began to fix these schools. Because I told him what I know for sure. It's as easy to make a boy than it is to repair a man. And if we can fix them in the beginning and interrupt Brother Hicks this pipeline from the schoolhouse to the jailhouse, then we can do something. Because, ladies and gentlemen, those of you who would look for another doctor ought to also be looking for another school system. Because 32% is unacceptable. And for every institution that is closing in our community, they are opening up new pods at the jail. Because institutions will flourish in this community. But there will be penal institutions and not educational institutions because we are not doing what we could. So I want to say to you that there's a lot of blame to go around. And none of us ought to let any of us off the hook because my parents, my mother, was poor. But she had enough sense to make sure we got an education. Poverty is no excuse. Time out for parents who are not engaged in their children's education. They are part of the problem as well. And we, while we talk about principals and teachers and schools, we also got to start talking about mamas and daddies and homes. Because as Dobai said, that we were taught as children that twin virtues, education and faith, would take us everywhere we needed to go. But our parents, who may not have had a great education themselves, knew the value of education and they made sure we got an education. And now we have people who, who, who have free school 
and won't send their children and won't make sure their children do what they could until it's too late. And then when children get in trouble, that's the first time parents embrace the school and they come there with an attitude and acting foolish when they should have been engaged in the PTA in the beginning to make sure that things were the right way. So I want to say to you on behalf of a father who is a member of two PTAs in this parish that I'm concerned that 32% is not good enough. We ought to be in a panic mode. But look around. Not a school board member, not, a, not an administration, leader, none of those folks. And perhaps they feel threatened by this. And I'm suggesting to you, I love the folks who own school. I know all of them. That's not my issue. My issue is not the personality of individuals. It's bigger than them. But they are presiding over a Titanic-like system. And they are satisfied on the weeks they have meetings to go in and rearrange seats on the Titanic in the name of progress. And yet we are still on a sinking ship. I would suggest to you that we've got a lot of work to do. We've invited people to come, like Dr. Full and others, to talk to us. But this is where we are now. It's not my job to paint a pretty picture. I just got to tell it like it is. And that 32% success rate, it ain't pretty. I almost said amen. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, brother.